Hello everybody, I'm Anaji and this is FMV Review. So today we're going to be talking about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So basically this is a TV show taking place after the events of Marvel Endgame. Um, you have the world sort of recovering from the Thanos snap and we're following uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, two heroes who were closely tied to the Captain America character who has, dis uh, who has, who has disappeared and you're kind of seeing as they go after this terrorist group called the Flag Smashers, and they kind of start to wrestle with the legacy of Captain America and what it means to be, I would say, free. Now, of course, I am going to get into spoilers in this review, but ultimately what we're going to be asking is, uh, was Falcon and the Winter Soldier a boring return to the Marvel formula? So before I... Uh, I, I go into whether I think that's true or not. Uh, I want to say uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're digging the reviews. That would help me out quite a bit. But yes, let's get in to the show. So ultimately, the show is uh, focusing on Sam and Bucky. And I will say the show does flesh their characters out quite a bit. Um, I would say within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Sam and Bucky weren't super developed for the most part. And I, I'm starting to see one of the advantages of these Marvel TV shows is that they're getting to flesh out characters they couldn't before. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? In terms of transferring comic book storylines to cinematic stuff, TV is kind of the happy medium between the two because movies only come out like maybe once a year for Marvel or sometimes twice a year for Marvel, but usually they're not doing the same storyline. And... I think television more closely mimics the way comic books come out monthly or in terms of you're getting an update on stories at a more consistent pace and you can also tell more story. And unfortunately, I think this show benefits uh, from something like that. I, I ultimately think that the journey that Sam goes on to becoming Captain, um, Captain America is ultimately a engaging one. I'm not going to lie. I do think the fifth episode of this six episode run is doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of conveying that journey, but they, they get it done nonetheless. And I also think they kind of do an interesting thing with Bucky where he's almost this kind of variation on Steve. You're going to actually kind of see it within the show. There are certain characters that are almost like a variation on Steve Rogers and the legacy that he's left behind uh, intentionally and, um, not intentionally as well. Um, but I'm just going to lead me to another element of the show I did like. Uh, the Return of Zemo. I think Baron Zemo, I didn't really think he was too memorable in terms of the Civil War. Yeah, his plan was ambitious, but you didn't really get to see if Zemo could really do anything. You just saw that he was kind of a mastermind kind of guy. And I think it was good to see him come back in a story where it's not necessarily about super-powered individual, individuals or having the whole Avengers gang fight a guy like Zemo. It doesn't really make sense because... He's not really that kind of villain. But I do think he does get the shine here. I do want to see more of Zemo. Zemo. I think Daniel Brühl does a really good job playing this almost, this kind of uh, very meticulous scheming kind of villain. But I also think what they do with Zemo here is interesting in terms of adding some complication to the Avengers and superheroes and superpowers in general. He definitely has some interesting philosophical views on how the super soldier serum and super powered human beings may not be such a great thing because you don't know who's getting those powers and you don't know the mentality of people who are actively seeking powers out. They're not going to all be good. And I think Zemo being here definitely added some much needed complexity and also, he's just a cool character. I mean, you've seen all the memes of him dancing around and stuff like that. I mean, he's a fun character. He's a fun character. But we're going to move on to another character I thought was really interesting, which was John Walker. So when I talked about those sort of variations on Steve Rogers' legacy, John Walker is kind of is a very interesting character in terms of he becomes the new Captain America in Captain America's uh, absence. And you see sort of how Steve was such a special guy and that John Walker is like a decorated hero. He's he's like an all-American boy, you know what I'm saying? But he lacks that sort of individualism that Steve had. He's more of a soldier in certain terms. And you see as he wrestles with having the mantle of Captain America and 
also, I mean, to be real, I know they're they're painting him villainous in this, and not to say he doesn't do any villainous things within the show, but I kind of felt for his character in terms of the way, I think they were also using his character to kind of comment on, there was a kind of a lot of memes going on of, Steve Rogers is how America sees itself, and John Walker's more how the rest of the world sees America. And I think they did a pretty interesting thing on here. I do think that they needed some more time to flesh this character out because they have it where, I mean, I've already said spoilers, so I'm not going to. The character of Lamar, who's sort of his, who's his best friend, the way they didn't really develop that character and so much of what happens to that character pushes John into certain directions. And unfortunately, from an emotional level, I was having to do a lot of heavy lifting to like give John Walker that motivation. So I don't think they really did a great job in terms of that. But this is going to be kind of a, a continuing thing when it comes to sort of the villains of this show. Carly and the Flag Smashers. Now, I think when Carly and them were first introduced, especially Carly, I think they're pretty interesting villains, right? They kind of, you kind of get a glimpse of, so when the blip happened, uh, a lot of people disappear. So a lot of different barriers and things that separated people and nations kind of went away. You just kind of had it where all of humanity was trying to recover from this tragedy. And it kind of, it kind of unified uh, humanity to a certain extent. And I've kind of witnessed certain things happening now on a global scale quite like that. I think, to be real, I think COVID-19 is going to be one of those things for humanity. But I remember in America when the uh, when nine eleven happened, you definitely there was definitely a certain sentiment among among America Americans that sort of uh, tied us closer together, and you can see what Carly and them were fighting for. That now that people are brought back from the blip, people are trying to reestablish those boundaries and kind of go back to the way the world was before. But she's trying to fight to make it where, like their their motto it says, uh, one people, one world. You know what I'm saying and but unfortunately, I don't think they really flesh it out enough. And her character's views and actions kind of just flip flop throughout the show. And I think it ultimately weakens her. They also bring back someone like Sharon Carter, right? Who I thought was going to have a much bigger role within the cinematic universe, but they didn't really seem to use her a whole lot. And I think in the few scenes that Sharon is here, she's good. But I think the twist they do with her didn't really work for me i don't really know anything about her as a character i feel like there's a lot of missing there's a big gap of time missing from the last time we saw sharon to where she is now and i think it i think it extends to a lot of things in this show so let me let me just kind of get into just marvel in general i actually think this show needed more episodes um, when i'm talking about the various villains i think in terms of sam and bucky they do a fairly good job of giving them enough time which, I mean, that's the bare minimum. They're the main characters. But I think in terms of the villains, like Carly and John Walker and whatnot, we probably needed an episode of seeing John Walker and Lamar's friendship and why they're so close and what they went through. Um, we probably needed an episode of seeing Carly and how she grew up um, with these beliefs or how she bonded with these people so we can care about the Flag Smasher. Because to be real... I started, I stopped caring about the Flag Smashers more and more as the show went on. And yeah, I think this show would have benefited from maybe having two or three more episodes. I wouldn't have been opposed to it. I think the way, because of the way this story, and I think this is another positive thing, this story really kind of embraces the sort of various nations and different groups of people we've run into without the, throughout the Marvel Universe, the more grounded human element. But it's nice to see like the Wakandans come back that they weren't forgotten about. Uh, Zemo coming back, Sharon, all these various characters and different entities coming back because it kind of creates this more interconnected feeling to the world, which is ultimately what Marvel's kind of going for anyway, right? Um, now, of course, uh, the Marvel stuff are basically action shows or action movies. And I do think the action here is solid. I would say for the most part, though, whenever the action started going down, I my eyes kind of glazed over. Though I will say there are maybe like two action sequences in particular in this season that I thought were legitimately good. Uh, there's one in episode five at the very beginning, you know exactly what it is. And I would say in the very last episode involving Sam and some like high flying acrobatic stuff. But yeah, the action is ultimately kind of eh. But the real reason I'm going to give this show as much accolades as I'm going to give it is the fact that for a Disney Marvel show, two entities that for the most part play it relatively safe, 
this show was really going into the <laughs> into America's uh, troubled past. This movie does an interesting thing of using Steve and the symbol of the sh Captain America and the shield to kind of talk about America and to be real America's like racist past, right? Like you have the character of Isaiah Bradley, who is this black man who was given the same super surge, super soldier serum as Steve, except they were experimented and they, and through the Isaiah Bradley character, they do an interesting thing of tying into the actual history of America of how, America in particular has not treated black people particularly well. If you want to, here's an example, the Tuskegee experiments, that they are di directly referencing that. And I was surprised that they did that, even in terms of Sam's character motivation of why he doesn't take up the shield right away. I mean, if some as someone of color in this nation, I understood immediately why he didn't want to take that shield up because... America has this thing of espousing certain beliefs of equality and justice, but not necessarily acting them out or, yeah, not necessarily acting them out. And they actually kind they actually got into into those certain elements in this show, which surprised me because as much as I like Captain America and whatnot, there is weird stuff in the first Avengers movie where he has like a totally multiracial unit right in it but if you know that history of time racism was really bad then i'm not saying racism is great now but racism was really bad then so to have this kind of weird rewriting of history of like oh there's no racism and this is all this multicultural stuff i like the fact that the show got into those more politically and philosophically complex issues especially in terms of america because i don't I, i'm hoping what happened is people watch this show and they got their eyes open to maybe what some people of color are saying about America and our complicated feelings towards it. So ultimately what I'm going to say is that I expected the Falcon and the Winter Soldier to kind of just be a boring series that I wouldn't really care about. But surprisingly, by investing in the characters and really diving into politically complex and complicated history of America, the show elevated itself. And with that, I'm going to give The Falcon and Winter Soldier an 8 out of 10. So hey, if you dug this review, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.